may be seated. Amen. What a service. Wow, we're having fun. Let's pray. God, we are so grateful to be here. We just honor you. We worship you. Or you're the God of all creation. You are above all, through all, in all. Father, we are amazed at all that you've done, not only in the creation, but in our lives. You are the way maker. You are constantly working, even when we see nothing. Father, we're so grateful to be in your kingdom. We're so grateful to be chosen out of billions of people in the world to know you, to be able to surrender our lives to Jesus, to know that he died for each and every one of us, to set us free to have eternal life. Father, help us to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Help us to glorify you in everything that we do. We're so grateful to be here. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Good morning. Jesus has totally changed my life for the better. In John 14, Jesus states something so simple yet so radical. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the way. He didn't say a way. He said the way. There aren't millions of ways to God. There aren't five ways to God. There aren't four or two ways to God. He said he is the only way to God. Makes it simple. There aren't a bunch of choices. There's one choice, so that simplifies things greatly. He, was, he is the truth, not a truth, not a better truth. He's the only truth. That simplifies things. We don't have to look around for a bunch of truths. We just need to find the one truth. Where's the one truth? It's Jesus. Jesus is the truth. He's the only way to the Father. It's not a guessing game. He said very definitively, he is the way, the life, the truth, the way to the Father. So, again, we don't have to guess. That makes things simple, but it also makes things a bit complicated when it comes to us living in a world where there are so many ways. In fact, if you say there's only one way, you're condemned. People think you're really bad. So yes, this is complicated because Jesus is exclusive. He's not saying everything's okay. He's not saying however you want to live, live whatever you want to have. There's many ways to heaven, many roads that all get there, which is how I was raised. Even in church, I was raised that way. Oh, there are many roads to get there. I'm like, okay, so why am I on this one? It made me really question. Jesus is exclusive. He said he is the only way to God. The only way. That's tough to hear when we want choices. Because he says he's the only, he's the only choice. Now look, it's either the truth or a lie. And Jesus didn't live the life of a liar which would make him the biggest hypocrite that ever lived because he taught truth, and he said, you need to be truthful all the time. And so that isn't who Jesus was, and he wasn't a lunatic because he didn't live that kind of life. I mean, he turned the world upside down. Lunatics don't do that. Lunatics are laughed at, and they're done away with. Liars die. They're forgotten. Jesus is amazing. He's the most revolutionary figure of anyone in the history of mankind. His way has profoundly changed the world. It's just that his way is a complete rebellion to established worldly thinking, which is unsettling since we live in the world of very liberal thinking. So this is tricky. He teaches things that are utterly shocking and do not seem to make any sense at all. Love your enemy. Does that make sense? I mean, couldn't it be ignore your enemy? Couldn't it be pay somebody to wipe him out? Or couldn't it be pray that he, God takes him out of the equation? I mean, wouldn't that make more sense to us than love your enemy? 
I mean, who of us naturally, naturally just feels like loving our enemy? Oh, what a natural response to having an enemy. It doesn't make sense. Jesus does not only love them, you need to pray for them. And he didn't say pray for them to die. He said pray for them. Pray for their well-being. It doesn't make sense. Turn the other cheek and let them hit that one too. That doesn't make that. What about self-defense? That doesn't make any sense. Become a slave and serve others. Hey, what about my life? What about my ways? What about me? No, say, maybe become a slave, serve others rather than yourself. Forgive all people who wrong you. Even when you don't want to, because he can hear us. That doesn't make any sense. However, can you imagine what the world would be like if everybody practiced these things? Loving your enemy, praying for your enemy, turning the other cheek, becoming a slave, serving everybody, forgive everybody who wrongs you. Wow, what a group. Of course, that's what we need to be. But what a world. I mean, the, the problem is, I guess if you call it a problem, it's a choice we have to make. It's not something we become because we're not that. It's not natural because this is unnatural. But it's a choice that must be made. You see, when we choose, when I, I'll just talk about me. When I choose to trust and obey, his way totally changes my life for the better. Even when I am utterly confused, which most of us are so much of the time. It's his way. It's his way. It's the way. So confusing. I mean, look at his life. There's some confusing things here in the New Testament. He said he was the Prince of Peace. He was prophesied to be the Prince of Peace. But he told the crowds that he did not come for peace. One minute he told his followers to buy swords. But then he rebuked Peter for using his. He came to heal. But left multitudes of needy people unhealed of their diseases. He visited only one cemetery to raise the dead that we're aware of. Whose cemetery was that? Lazarus's. Oh, wait a minute. You're like, uh, oh, yeah, one more. His own. So he visited one cemetery voluntarily, Lazarus's, and then he was in one and raised himself out of the dead. But the confusion continues. I mean, he had all power, yet he did not turn around any of the social issues of his day. You're all powerful. What are you doing here? Turn it around. Nor did he eliminate poverty or slavery. Are you kidding me? It's so confusing. It's even crazy. This just looks crazy to me. I mean, why not? He left his his three-year earth-shattering ministry in charge of imperfect men, some of whom were still struggling in their faith at the point of his departure. They were still doubting. I mean, why not pick successors who never doubted? Wouldn't that be a better, better plan? How about the centurion? He never doubted. Let's pick him. How about the Syrophoenician woman? She didn't seem to be doubting. Let's pick her. Let's put together a team that never doubted. But he didn't. He chose men who struggled in their faith. Wow. Why not heal all the sick? I mean, come on. You come down from heaven. Why not see, heal all the sick? Why not raise all the dead? Go to every cemetery. Raise all the dead. Why not fix all the injustice? Why not? I don't understand. I'm confused. Are you? Enter God. Enter God. Yeah, this, this is a wake-up call here. 
For my thoughts are not your thoughts. That's a wake-up call. And that's all I've read so far. We could end the message right here. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. Doesn't even say says the Lord, declares the Lord. He wants us to get this. And then he gives us a comparison. As, as, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. And we're not talking about the clouds here, and we're not talking about the mist that happens after a certain rainstorm. We're talking about the heavens past the clouds, past the stratosphere, past, past the moon, past the solar system, and past the Milky Way. We're talking about everything. We're talking about, well, God dwells. The universe is in the, in the, the entire universe is in the palm of his hand, so to say. So we're not talking about how his ways are a little higher than our ways. Or his, his thoughts are just a little bit higher than our thoughts. We're talking about apples and oranges here. I mean, this is a setup for failure. This is, this is going to cause confusion. Lord, do you know what you're doing here? You're saying that our ways aren't even close to your ways or our thoughts not even close? And you're asking us to, to, to follow you, but we don't even know what they are? I mean, what's going on here? This, this is a struggle. I mean, maybe you're not struggling with it. But I think I'm going to be venting here a little bit. I am. I struggle often with this. I mean, why not give us everything we desire? Why not? Why not answer every prayer in exactly the way we pray it? Why not take away all the suffering and pain and tears? Why can't we live pain-free, hunger-free, debt-free, sickness-free lives? Wouldn't that be nice? God, why do you not do what we would do? Why can't your ways be our ways? Why not obey us? Why not give us the power? Isn't that what we're saying? When we struggle, isn't that often what our prayers sound like, really? In our battle with conflicts in this life and trouble in this life and hardship in this life and how it never seems to go our way. And that, that Irish proverb, that Irish thing, I don't know what it is. I don't know whose name God associated with that, but it's our struggle. It's my struggle. Why not? Why can't our ways be his ways? Why not obey us? Why not give us the power? Really? 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 I mean, would you make a good God? I sure, I sure would not make a good God. My wife has assured me of that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> she builds me up. She's amazing. I... God led me to the exact, exact woman I needed. God has a different way. It's a better way. But you got to trust it. Because it's not going to feel like it. And you're not going to want to trust. You're not going to feel like doing that either. Everything in you is going to scream against it. You know, this is an assumption here, you know, but if your goal is eternal life, which is my assumption if you're here, if your goal is eternal life, not only is his way far higher and far better, it is the only way to eternity. So I might be bringing bad news or good news. 
But you can struggle, you can argue, you can shout, and you can pout, and you can throw a tantrum. But if you want to go to heaven, his way is the only way to heaven. So you better get on board or you're going to get left behind. You know, if everything went our way, would we seek him? Think about that. Wouldn't need to, because everything's going your ways. You got like this eternal Santa Claus that gives you everything every day, 24-7, 365. Would we learn to trust him or follow him or love him? I mean... If everything worked out our way, if we got everything we wanted, everything we want, I mean, really, how's that going to work out? How's that work out for a three-year-old? The three-year-old gets everything he wants, all the ice cream and candy, never has to go to bed, never has to sleep, does everything he wants for a while. How's that working out for that three-year-old? We're like, no, honey, you can't have candy at every meal. Why not? Because mommy said so. Why? I mean, I remember one time JD, you know, he did something that wasn't right. He had to be disciplined. And he's, I was like, why? And I said, because I'm your boss. <laughs> well, who's your boss? I said, God, God is my boss. He goes, oh. <laughs> Do three year olds understand why they can't have candy at every meal? Aren't we just big three-year-olds? Aren't we just three-year-olds that have been three for a long time without learning the lesson? It's almost like Groundhog Day. We just keep repeating and repeating, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. And we're still three-year-olds in, in our emotional sense. At least I am. I can't speak for you. I'm just assuming it's more than me that struggles with this stuff. Why can't it be more my way? Why can't it go easier? Why can't it be better? Why can't it make more sense? I mean, it's hard. We got to be willing to accept that his way is better. We got to choose his way is better. Jesus has totally changed my life for the better. But here's the rub. I do not doubt that Jesus is who he says he is, the way, the truth, and the life. I'm simply conflicted about how the way works in my personal life and the why and all the drama. Why all the drama? Man, I shouldn't look up. Why all the drama? I don't know what could happen here. Um, the emotional struggles. The physical struggles, the financial struggles, the psychological struggles, trials and tests and conflicts. I had a really challenging week last week. Hours on the phone getting nowhere with some customer service people who kept switching me to new people, who kept switching me to new people, who finally got back to the original people who said, well, that was a mistake. Just tell them not to switch you next time. And then going to, going to customer service uh, supervisors who couldn't do anything or transferring to supervisors of supervisors of supervisors who transferred me back to my original phone call. And we've all been there because it takes hours and hours and hours. Anyway, and then somebody was trying to we owed somebody a small amount of money, but they were trying to extort a lot of money out of it. And I was really upset. You know, when you know, when you know the guy's lying, and even you know the guy knows he's lying, and he's trying to convince you of, of a lie, that he knows is a lie, and I know his lie, and he knows I know it's a lie, but he believes his acting skills will be so good, I'll believe the lie and pay the extra money. I was really upset. Am I venting? I got to go to the gym. I got to go punch something. I got to go work out. I got to go do something because I'm not doing well here. I am struggling. My wife is out of town and I'm not doing well. So I went to the gym, worked out, doing better. Go back to the locker room. Where's my lock? Open it up. Everything's been rifled through. My wallet's sitting there empty. My phone is missing. My phone is stolen. Why a fuss? Stealing a phone? What are you going to do with the phone? It's an iPhone. You can't even get in it. 
I was upset. Now i got to replace my phone. So I'm driving to Verizon, and I just started losing it in the car. I'm like, God, God, why? Why? I'm having a rough day here. Why? Why is this happening? Why did my phone have to be stolen? I mean, have you had days like that? I think you have. That wasn't a very loud yes. I think you have. You know, I was so upset. I was, I was so angry, but I was so sad at the same time. So I was so sad I wanted to cry, but I was too angry to cry. And I thought, I know a good cry would do me good. I know it would be so, so beneficial, but I couldn't get myself there. I was trying, but I was so angry. Oh, I don't know. I hope I'm not the only one that goes through this stuff. Jesus has totally changed my life for the better. But do we really need the drama? Seems like drama seems like business is normal. I mean, this service was not planned out in the sense of what are you going to talk about and what are you going to talk about? What are you, but have you caught the theme, the way maker? I didn't know she was going to sing that song. Did you catch the theme of how God worked through, through, through uh, Mo's family's experience with his vacation he was trying to do in Mexico? It's like, wow, God has a theme here. He's saying something. Something's going on here that we need to hear. That his way is higher than our way. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. I mean, who likes a good suspense film? Do anybody here like a good suspense film, really good suspense film? Yeah. How did it go last week for you? That was it. Anybody here like a good drama? A good drama? A good drama? People are like, a good drama? Yeah. How about last week with your uh, marriage and your kids? There was your good drama. I mean, we could write the next blockbuster about some of the events in your life. Hey, let's watch the video about Franco's life last week. Woo. The angels are like, woo. It's his way. It's the way. It's the way. A few years ago, this is so hard to share, but I'm going to share it because it's just a good illustration. A few years ago, I had it all planned out, and I'm a planner, and I plan so much, and even vacations are planned so much. I didn't plan to have fun, so I don't. <laughs> I'm an over-planner. My wife is like, can you just keep it at that and let's just little, little creativity get in there. <laughs> and I love creativity, but it's a conflict, you know, it's a conflict. You, you, you want to plan for the right creativity, but that isn't creative, is it? Anyway, uh, I had my life all planned out. I mean, I knew, you know, when I was a kid, I knew where I was going to retire. I mean, that's how bad it is. I had my life all planned out. I was going to keep working in the full-time ministry in New York until retirement Stay healthy physically, emotionally, mentally. Then I had a ski accident, and I'm a good skier. It's not like I don't know what I'm doing, and it wasn't my fault. J.D. and I were on a slope. We were going pretty fast, and then suddenly I wipe out, and I'm like, what on earth? I went spinning down the hill, and I look up the hill, and there's a guy laying there and not doing well, not getting up. And I'm like, I had no idea what happened. He had, he had run into my foot. And he was actually hurt, and so he had to be taken down on a stretcher. I didn't think I was hurt. So I kept walking on it. I kept skiing that whole day. In fact, we skied. I guess we skied three more days after that with a bunch of father and son ski trip. Well, after that, I was a mess. I couldn't walk. I was on crutches, finally a wheelchair. I wasn't doing well. So I had this horrible ski accident, and then we had this ministry crisis because we tried to do a merge that didn't really work too well, and there were a lot of angry people, and it was all my fault, even though it wasn't my idea. Have you ever been in that at work, where it wasn't your idea, but it's your fault anyway? It's like, what? What's This is crazy. And I was in pain. I couldn't walk. I was in a wheelchair. I had chronic pain. I wasn't sleeping. I was getting like two hours of sleep a night. I just broke down. Totally broke down. Three major breakdowns in a row. I had to go on disability. I couldn't walk. I couldn't read my Bible. I couldn't pray. I, I, I was a mess. I, this has never happened to me before in my life. I was a mess. And during disability, during three months into disability, I had an open heart surgery. 
People said, you look so healthy. Well, I had an open heart surgery. That's what stress does. Just because you look like this doesn't mean you're not going to have a heart problem. Right. If you're all stressed out, which I was and have been most of my life, you're going to have issues. Right. So in, in, in healing from the open heart surgery, I was in recovery a few weeks later. I was let go from my career in the ministry. That was not my plan. I was a broken man. I was a mess. Absolutely a mess. I lost my job one year before retirement after 34 years in the ministry. Why? It made no sense. I mean, what am I capable of doing? This is the only career I've ever had in my life. I mean, to look for another ministry job, but who would hire a broken man? I mean, yeah, it was one of the hardest times I have ever had in my entire life. I'm like, well, I guess I could be a greeter at Walmart. And I'm not joking with you. I literally thought that many times. Because I thought, well, what career could I get where all I could do is just say hello to people? Which is what I think they do. Maybe they do more than that. Anyway, was God at work? Did God have a plan? Problem was, I just couldn't see it. I couldn't feel it. I couldn't imagine it. All I could see was pain. All I could see was disappointment. All I could see was fear of what was going to happen next. So I couldn't afford to retire. So I was hired, finally I, I was hired to do a five-year land development project in western Montana. Now this is the same valley where the TV drama Yellowstone takes place. I'd never seen the program, I'd heard of it, because everybody said, oh, this is where Yellowstone takes place. I understand it's a, it's a Western, modern Western thriller. I mean, there's a lot of drama in it. I've heard that. Everybody said, oh, yeah, this is exactly where they film it. I'm like, something should have said to me, uh, caution, caution, you're going into the place where this drama is filmed. You know, you know how it is? Something should have, it didn't. Um, I was simp- it's not like I was simply watching a great drama unfold on TV. I was the main character. I moved to the very place where it happened. Loaded, drama, loaded with guns and threats and lies and sabotage and cowboys' killings and cursings. Talk about, and I'm not lying, this is true. Talk about stressful. I was stressed out. I mean, shaking all the time. My wife is like, you're shaking. After you've been through four years like this and not shake, wow, where'd you get that? What are you taking? (laughs) I was a mess. And then suddenly, suddenly, just as our good-hearted protagonist was about to crumble under the pressure, surprise, God enters. The project unexpectedly and miraculously ended in success, enabling me to partially retire. We bought a house we had never seen, and moved to a place we had never been to in our lives, Shelton, Connecticut. Have I told you how blessed we are? But this is the way it's been my entire life. My entire life. I don't have time to tell you all about that. Just one example. In 1986, God sent me to Brazil to be a part of a mission team without knowing even one word of Portuguese. I was on the airplane getting people's attention. How do you say thank you in Portuguese? How do you say hello? I didn't know one word. We, we landed on the ground. Mike Tolliver gets us all huddled in a gather. Says, okay, we're going to go out and share our faith with everybody in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I'm like, how? He goes, you'll figure it out with God's help. Amen. Bon dia. Bon dia. Finally, what I did was I had somebody write it on a card to invite people to church. I mean, I tried memorizing how to say it. Eu gostaria de convidar você a nossa 
He, but my pronunciation was so bad, they take the card out of my hand and read it for themselves. <laughs> he said, okay, now, after our first Bible talk, now we're all going to break up and study the Bible with people. Jim, you're with that group, and Sam, you're with Grab, and, you know, we all divide it up. I'm like... How do I do this? All I could do is take a Bible and open it up, the Portuguese Bible, open it up. Thankfully, I, I, I at least recognize the names of the Gospels because they don't sound so different. Matthew is Mateus, you know, Mark is Marcos, Lucas, João. It's not so bad. So at least I could do that. And thankfully, thankfully, thank you, God, the chapters and verses are identical. So... <laughs> I, show, I would show them the verse, like 2 Timothy 3.16, and have them read it. And I'd watch the expression on their face. And if it didn't change, I'd go like this. <laughs> Sometimes I did it two or three times till so they went. And then I knew, ah, okay, so I'd turn to the next one. I'd do things like this. And I saw people's lives change. I mean, I, I, had a, I had an attitude with God. Why am I here? I'm a page turner. Anybody can do this. Then I realized, but this is the way. This is his way to get it accomplished. This is how he's glorified, not me. God's way has rescued me from death by storms, death by boats, death by cars, out of control mobs, and angry individuals. In all of this, God has been at work. God is far more powerful than any set of circumstances in your life. We panic. He plans. Just wait to see what's going to happen. Jesus has totally changed my life for the better because it's the way. If you're on the way, this is what happens. His tests have taught me and continue to teach me to really depend on God. I mean, what other choice have I to trust in me? Do I make a good God? No. I have no power to go against this stuff. I have no power. Sure, you can try it to do your way without God. Good luck with that. Maybe you're trying it now your way. How's that working out for you? The truth is, there's only one way that works, and it's his way. And it's not your way. And it's going to be confusing. And you're going to struggle with it. And it's going to be a conflict of interest. It's going to be apples and oranges. And it won't make sense. And you'll be arguing. And you'll be fussing like a three-year-old. But if you finally just choose... To trust the way, okay, mommy, I'm going to eat my vegetables. If you just trust his way, you'll see how it's going to turn out. His way is better. It's the only way to the Father. We have to pray and we have to trust. So why do I need to be nice to that jerk in my office who hates me? It is the way. Why do I need to be sexually pure? It is the way. Why do I need to consider others better than myself? It is the way. Why do I need to forgive that person that claims to be a disciple that has wronged me so deeply? It is the way. We may never know the why, but we definitely know the way. You know, I'm not promoting programs on television, but there's one that's kind of cool. It's safe to watch as a family, no swearing, no flesh. It's, you know, in today's day and age, this is amazing. It's Disney's Mandalorian. It's, it's about a religion. Um, there's some good quotes. Mandalorians are stronger together. That's a pretty good quote. Uh, but there are some other quotes that show it's certainly not a Christian religion. Uh, quotes like, bounty hunting is a complicated professor. Bounty hunting is a complicated profession. 
Complicated in what way? <laughs> or this one, weapons are a part of my religion. I saw that in Montana. Um, come on, baby, do that magic hand thing with baby Yoda. Or this is my favorite. I'm sorry, lady, I do not understand frog. <laughs> it's a Disney production that's a spinoff off Star Wars, and so there's all these weird characters and all this stuff. And they keep saying the, the phrase, their, their, their mantra is for their religion, this is the way, this is the way. I thought they stole that from Jesus. But it works for them because it keeps them strong, it keeps them unified, it keeps them purposeful. It keeps their, their focus on the right way. This is the way. They, they encourage one another. This is the way. You know, when they're struggling with, with wondering why things are happening, this is the way. You know, we have a way too. And it's Jesus' way. And it's a way that works. We all have our own stories and dramas and conflicts and doubts. I just shared mine. You have your own. So let's get on Jesus' way. And let's encourage one another by assuring ourselves that these light momentary troubles are achieving for us something far greater than anything we could possibly imagine. This is how God is working in our lives. This is how God's way has blessed us in the past. This is how God's way will bless us currently. So let's share our dramas with one another. Let's talk about our lives. Let's talk about what God's going to do next. What might unfold. Most likely, he will surprise you. Most of my dramas have endings I would have never imagined, like being in Shelton, Connecticut, with the Southern Connecticut Church of Christ. That I did not see coming. We made an offer on a house in Montana. They turned down the offer. Teresa goes, well, what about this house? She found it on the, online. We'd never seen the house. I'd never heard of where Shelton was. I just knew Jeff and Florence. I knew the round trees and a couple other people here. And I'm like, well, let's just see. Make some wild offer. And they accepted it. We'd never seen the house. I feel like a parable of Jesus. They bought a house they had not seen. But it turned out well. We're so happy to be here. We're so grateful. Have I told you how God has blessed my life? It is the way. Amen.